Here we go. Hey folks, welcome back. Mark here and today I'm going to take you on an incredible journey of intergalactic travel. That's right, we're going to go photographing alien planets, we're going to make new discoveries and we're going to boldly go where... Okay, so we're going to be photographing soap bubbles, but it's going to be awesome. That's it. Today we're going to be photographing detergent soap bubbles in the comfort of our own home. It's a fun and fantastic little creative photographic idea. Great to get the family involved, especially the kids. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it and I'll show you the gear that you need. We only need a few bits and pieces for this kind of photography. Um, as for the lighting, I'm going to go through a few different scenarios, going from very basic all the way up to a bit more advanced. Um, but in and of themselves, it's only advanced because of the equipment that we're using. The technique in itself is actually very straightforward and very simple. All right. Um, the few things that I've that we need for the shoot. First and foremost, water. Okay, uh, I've got different vessels, um, but this is just the, only the holding vessel. I'll explain what I mean in a minute. Um, we have some soap detergent, okay, some detergent washing up liquid, and, and also some glycerin. And what this does basically is this adds a bit more fortitude um, to the soap bubbles, and so they stay around a little bit longer. Um, if you've seen soap bubbles and I'm sure we all have uh, you only they only have a, a lifespan of about 10-15 seconds and then poof, they blow up um, by adding a bit of glycerin to the to the mix it just makes that um, lifespan as it were uh, extend just a little bit longer and it allows us to take our time a bit more to get photographs um, the exact amount of uh, mix ratio I don't think there is one particularly uh, but what I'm going to do you can see I've got a little glass here Okay, let's just go ahead and chuck in some soap detergent. I've gone about 50-50 almost, I think, on that. <laughs> the wife will kill me. Uh, and then we're going to put in some uh, per glycerin. And it's just a thickening agent to uh, hopefully make everything last just a little bit longer. I'm going to give that a little bit of a stir. And you can see the glycerin in the water there reacting and then eventually it just goes nice and clear very good okay now if i was to blow bubbles in here what's going to happen you're going to get a whole pile of bubbles come up and maybe it's going to be difficult to try and find one bubble to photograph especially um, because of what it is that we want to do how we want to photograph so the smaller or the lower profile an object you can get from where you're going to blow your bubbles the better uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of water in the bottom of there with the solution and this is from where we'll be blowing our bubble So the idea of the receptacle is that the lower it is, the easier it is to handle the uh, to handle the bubbles. Like if, for example, we try doing the same thing in the tool glass with that solution in, we try blowing bubbles. All we're going to get is a whole load of foam like this. Obviously, it's going to be quite difficult to uh, to take that nice big dome shot. Okay, you can try and get the solution all the way to the top of the glass to blow one big bubble but it is a waste of solution basically. Um, but that said, with this, with this amount of bubbles, there is an aspect of this same kind of imaging on these same lines that we're also going to uh, have a bit of a bash at later on. And that is with all of the smaller bubbles you get here, all of the little veins that join the bubbles, um, they in themselves can be uh, yeah, offer up quite some surprises with regards to patterns and, and shapes and, and forms. Uh, so we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later on. Okay, um, where are we? Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Let's put that over there. Okay, as normal, I'm going to be shooting today on my Canon EOS 5DSR. Um, lenses wise, for the first part with regards to the, um, the uh, bubble shots, the single bubble shots, I'm going to be using my very beloved Tamron 90mm uh, f2.8 macro lens. Very cool, one-to-one -one, uh, macro ratio. Uh, for macro ratios and understandings, check out this uh, video on focus stacking that I made. Uh, it will be linked up there on the screen. 
Okay, and for the images of the um, the veins between the bubbles later on, I'll be using this one, which is the uh, the Lauer 60 millimeter f 2.8. But this is two to one macro ratio. And again, for clarification on what is a macro ratio, check out that video. All right. Um, to begin with, we're going to be using. Uh, the light that I use to film uh, myself with and that is just the basic rim light. Um, if you don't have a third party light, e even just uh, room lights or whatever, I'm, I'm going to try and go through all of the lighting scenarios from room light to ring light to flash to off camera flash and just show you um, the uh, pros and cons with regards to e using each one of those uh, lights for this kind of photography. Okay, so without further ado, let's get set up for our first shot. There we go. And you can see the bubble there. And you can see the downside to this is the settings of the camera. You can see in order to get a correctly composed uh, shot, um, we've got or a correctly exposed shot, sorry. In order to get a correctly exposed shot, We've got a shutter speed of 1.3 seconds, an aperture of f16 and an ISO of 640. Now, this could all be okay, including the ISO. The attraction of these planet bubbles um, is that on the bubbles themselves, they've got all of these lovely moving gases or moving elements, moving liquids on them. And you really want to try and um, freeze those in order to get that, that planetary look. The problem we have when we're taking a photograph of this with these settings is that all of those little elements within the within that are on the surface of the bubble, all of those little elements, they all simply merge into a long exposure um, mulch of blurriness, as it were, of colour. Okay, on the image themselves. Even if we punch in, you look at the. Um, just on the surface of the water here, there are some elements of texture, and items, but they're they're quite blurred. Okay, they're not they're not frozen. Um, but apart from that, the negative side of it is that we've got all of these elements from the room. Uh, in the bubble as well, that all of the lights, the the ring light, the the reflectors, the the room light itself, me. <laughs> uh, there's lots of things in it um, that obviously detract from the image itself, and you'll see hopefully the progression that we make from this to the final image when we come to have taken the uh, final shot. So it stands to reason we want to get some light on the subject, and there's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, firstly, we're going to look at a light that is connected to the camera. Uh, albeit by way of an umbilical lighting cable. Uh, you can get these from any regular uh, camera store, should, should stock them. And what it does, it allows you to take what would be uh, an on-camera flash, it just fits into the hot shoe like that and locks into place. It allows you to take what would be an on-camera flash and turn it into an almost off-camera flash because it's, whilst it is um, out wild and free as it were, uh, connects simply like that. Whilst it is out and free uh, and it allows you a certain amount of dexterity with the manoeuvring of the flash, it still is to all extents and purposes uh, connected to the camera. Okay, but it gives you the ability now to, to light the uh, bubble from the top, which is where we really would prefer to light this, uh, to light the, the bubble from, okay? So let's give that a try. We'll get set up, uh, blow another bubble and see what we get. As we saw there, mm -mm, big failure. Um, what, we, what happened is we lowered the lights, we opened up the aperture and we used flash. Uh, and what happens when we open up the aperture? A, we're going to lose depth of field. Uh, and B, um, the light that comes from the flash starts to illuminate the, the black background that we've got here and we've got that because we want to isolate the, the details on the bubble, uh, the patterns that come from the detergent. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to come up with a way to diffuse the light and not have it so bright. Um, you did notice on a couple of the, on, on that shot there um, that uh, you are getting the reflection of the flash uh, in the bubble. 
which is obviously something that we don't want at all. Okay, so diffusion. To begin with, cheap scale, you have one of these. Um, well, even you don't have to spend anything. You've already got a diffusing panel on your flash. Okay, any decent flash has one of these tucked up in the top here. That just slides in and out of the holder there. Okay, going up from that in the camera store, you can pick up one of these. Um, it's like a little diffusing uh, option that you can put over the over your camera uh, flash like so and there you have a little diffusing panel there okay now the secret or the, one of the secrets one of the keys um, to photographing these alien planets um, is that you need a large diffused surface area for your flash and so what we're going to use we're going to employ the use of a reflector you sometimes see photographers out on a photo shoot just reflect bouncing light as it were reflecting light uh, back at the subject whether that's an animal a person a couple whatever um, they'll use these uh, reflectors to direct light wherever it is that they want it or they'll use them also to shade something and to just to create um, a more diffused light on their subject and that's what we're going to use it for um, quite simply all we're going to do is we're going to hold it very very close to the top of the camera like that and then once we're ready we're just going to put the flash down through this you hold i'm going to hold the flash here uh, and it's just going to flash down through here onto hopefully the planet on the bottom we're starting to get there okay the the black's nice and black you saw that there's lots of nice colors on the planet um, and things are looking good um, settings wise at the moment now we're on still on f16 but we've come down to 1 125th which means that we can now start to freeze uh, the details on the surface of the planet uh, and we're at ISO 200 okay and we're using this uh, flash the flash power is at 1 8th okay so we're not even on full flash at the moment um, but we're still missing something we're not getting that whole nice dome and what we need to do is to get closer still and with a, a larger amount of light and we're going to introduce a new flash now it's going to be the uh, Godox AD200 um, I'm going to be putting a uh, just a little bulb, bulb in here and I'm going to be attaching a uh, flash modifier or what some people call a softbox uh, placing that onto here and I'll be running that wirelessly via a trigger that's going to be on my camera now that the um, flash modifier is open you can see this open end here quite simply all that we do you've got this uh, rim around this holder here that just goes into this recess here with a bit of manipulation okay that sits in there quite snug and then it goes without saying this is the hole where our flash is going to sit so we just put it through there push it in a little bit and then we just keep it all in place with there we go a little screw down there so that's all nice and solid and now I can manipulate the camera flash or manipulate the flash uh, just by handheld so awesome source let's uh, give this one a go It's getting hot work in uh, in this little studio of mine with these lights on I'm sweating just a little bit but um, almost at the end and we've changed it up very very simple setup now we've just got our taller glass here uh, because what I noticed earlier on when I was setting up the uh, the other glass <coughs> is when I blew a whole bunch of bubbles in here you get all of the small bubbles uh, forming in the around the top of the glass like so and what happens is that you get all of these little different uh, surfaces or completely different angles uh, and all of them have got that 
same kind of uh, detergent film sliding around on them and they just come out with some very very interesting shapes and patterns so um, I'm gonna go ahead and this time with the flash what I'm gonna do is I'm using the main uh, Canon 600EX2 RT now to help me focus what I do is quite simply I will place a straw um, roughly in about the area that I want to focus and from there I'll just line up the camera and focus accordingly and this final setup here is we've got the we've got a stand here with a with the reflector on the top um, the glass is ready to be blown and the camera is good to go and all I'm going to do with the flash is I'm just going to hold it up here and just flash around the uh, reflector hoping hoping to get some nice images from the bubbles so let's give it a go very very simple Ooh. Blow some bubbles and fire away and if the uh, bubbles are quite voluminous like these ones you can always move or recall the glass as you wish let's come forward a bit actually you can always try and spin it around find new areas to focus on because these bubbles do actually leave quite quickly <laughs> Okay folks, well there you have it, awesome, uh, good fun, nice to get the liquid out and as you can see I've already selected one of my images for, from that shoot as a new screensaver, awesome stuff. I don't think I need to tell you how to edit these kind of images because they are straightforward so it's basically just down to your taste, uh, how, how you want to have the aesthetic, uh, I like the darker tones, uh, I like that kind of vibe and with these just crazy colours and different tonalities. I just like this kind of stuff. But uh, there you go, it's up to you, it's your ball. Um, there are a couple of things I would like to quickly say uh, with regards to this, is try and keep a low angle when you're blowing the bubbles and as soon as you see that first bubble forming, pull your straw out of the solution, the main solution, uh, otherwise you are just gonna get lots of bubbles building up as we saw in the second exercise. Uh, and secondly, if you are going to be using a camera with a, a, a reduced focal length, like a 60 millimeter macro, uh, be very wary that you're going to be have to get so close that the when the bubbles burst, they are going to leave some debris on the uh, on the glass elements of your lens. So please be wary to clean that off before you store your lens away, because you don't want that um, debris to build up and to leave uh, stains on a glass. Uh, for the future it, it may not impact it but aesthetically it doesn't look too great so uh, make sure to keep it clean beyond that if you decide to have a bash at this and you want to share those images on social media use pandemic pixels and if I see them I'll pick them up and I'll give you a shout out as I am about to shout out to somebody called Michael Lyon who is a guy here in Okinawa he belongs to the uh, Okinawa photographic and video community which is a Facebook uh, group that I set up uh, and he went and tried the water and oil uh, technique and came out with some awesome, awesome shots. So well done, Michael. Uh, and if I do pick up anybody, anyone else's shots, I'll be sure to give you a shout out. Um, so there it is. More content from yours truly. So thanks again, folks. Uh, I know I did change, by the way. This is the day after. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for your patronage. I appreciate it 1,000 billion percent. Um, please take care stay healthy stay distant uh, just take care and hopefully uh, we'll meet again very soon on this channel bye for now